to a government in exile, but it comes close. As Nightline correspondent Jed Duval reports, the ANC has become, over the years, the focal point of opposition to the government in power. These revolutionaries are controlled by a power clique which is typical of Marxist regimes and which is interested only in a violent takeover of power. For 20 years, the leaders of the white minority government of South Africa have complained about guerrillas of the African National Congress as terrorists, sneak attackers, murderers. In June of 1980, the ANC attacked this coal conversion plant. In May of 1983, a car bomb exploded outside Air Force offices in Pretoria, injuring more than 200 and killing 18. The African National Congress has not always been at war. We should lie down! The Congress, organized in 1912, learned much from Mahatma Gandhi. The great Indian rights leader, portrayed in the 1982 movie, taught nonviolent resistance, which he first practiced on behalf of Asians in South Africa. In 1919, the ANC organized demonstrations against pass laws. Thousands of blacks turned in passes they were required to carry. Hundreds were arrested. It was protest, but it was not violent. Often, it was violently put down by white authorities. The ANC was still holding meetings, this one in Bloemfontein in 1931, and holding marches, in effect, asking for rights, not yet fighting for them. After the Second World War, things changed dramatically. Kaffir is the white's derogatory term for blacks. Signs such as this in 1947 presaged what was to come. Isolation has sweep the national elections in South Africa. With the election in 1948 of the National Party, the present rulers, came apartheid laws. That's when apartheid was made into law and further black protest was not far behind. In March of 1961, in a place called Sharpville, police opened fire on a group of protesters. 69 were killed, many shot in the back as they fled. It was one of the turning points in South Africa's history. After Sharpville, the ANC was banned and went underground. It still is. In the early 60s, most of the ANC leadership was in detention, including Nelson Mandela or in hiding. So at that point, we felt that uh, we were left with only two choices, either to submit or fight. And we decided that we were going to uh, fight and to the bitter end. At that time, the early 60s, the ANC began doing this, blowing up power lines and other installations, aiming at things, not people, a polite form of war, attempting to disrupt, not kill. In 1976, Soweto. This was Soweto. Little Hector Peterson was the first to die. Hundreds of others were killed. The ANC says it was a thousand. The 10-year anniversary of Soweto was this past Monday. The ANC no longer aims only at wires and buildings and power stations. Much of the guerrilla war is conducted by Umkonto Wizizwe, Spear of the Nation, an offshoot of the ANC. A month ago, South Africa conducted bombing raids into Zambia, Zimbabwe, and Botswana, all aimed at ANC guerrillas. The Pretoria government occasionally shows off captured weaponry, usually of Soviet or other East Bloc origin, to back up its claim of communist influence or domination of the ANC. For the longest time, the ANC was uh, projected by the South African government as a communist organization. Uh, for the longest time, uh, we were not respected around the world because we were considered as nothing else but a bunch of senseless terrorists. But uh, the things are changing now. The ANC is made up of blacks, whites, colors, and Indians. Uh, the ANC seeks to unite all the people of South Africa, irrespective of their ideological differences. So, a 74-year-old organization, originally formed to peacefully petition for redress, is now the chief guerrilla group fighting the white minority government. Its leadership is outside South Africa or in hiding within the country. It maintains offices in New York and other prominent cities overseas. No one knows how many people belong. In spirit, virtually all those who throw rocks at troops and trucks in South Africa are members of the African National Congress. Jed Duval for Nightline from New York.
When we come back, we'll be joined by the president of the African National Congress, Oliver Tambo, who has a warning for American corporations doing business in South Africa. This is ABC News Nightline, brought to you by Kraft. Earlier today, we talked with the president of the National African National Congress, Oliver Tambo, who was in Geneva to meet with union leaders of the International Labor Organization to gain support in blocking trade with South Africa. Economic warfare is a part of the ANC campaign against apartheid, but violence is another part, which the South African government insists must be renounced before it will agree to any negotiations. I asked Dr. Tambo if it was possible to meet on some common ground. The onus for renunciation of violence is not on us. It's on those who are practicing, enforcing, presiding over a violent system. They must stop the violence of the apartheid system. Now, if the only way to stop the violence of the apartheid system is to stop apartheid itself. That would be a very, very good thing. That's what we are all demanding. That's what the international community is calling for. We have been compelled to take up arms in order to achieve our objective. So we are fighting. So there is a war that is developing. It has grown over the past two years. It could grow pretty rapidly. We have always thought this would happen. But the violent resistance to our demands compels us to take more and more into armed activities. That, in turn, provokes more repression. And so you get an escalation of conflict. This could go on indefinitely until you had a, a war situation, not just in South Africa, but in this whole region. Therefore, the only way the escalation can be interrupted is if the international community intervened with pressures against the operation of the apartheid system to create problems for the apartheid system. Dr. Tambo, at the moment, as you know, the executive branch of the U.S. government is openly opposed to economic sanctions. At the moment, as you know, the Prime Minister of Great Britain uh, and the Chancellor of West Germany are equally opposed to the imposition of economic sanctions. What then are the immediate consequences going to be? You're talking about within the next few weeks, within the next few months, what kind of a time period do you foresee before the escalation of violence begins? Well, first of all, may I say that um, uh, you, you are mentioning countries which uh, associate themselves with democratic principles. If the majority of the international community think we should impose sanctions, it should be difficult for the United States, Britain, or West Germany to resist the will of the majority, but be that as it may. If there is no intervention, if there is no intervention, then what I have said will happen. The South African situation will keep boiling up until it explodes and um, uh, spills over the borders of that country. What about those companies, American companies, British companies, West German companies that are still operating in South Africa? Would they too become targets of that violence? Well, they have no business to be there and I, I can't uh, uh, give any guarantees that they would be, uh, they would be uh, uh, free of uh, the consequences of a heightened conflict. It's one thing to be the incidental victim of the heightened conflict. What I'm really asking you is, would they become targeted? Well, we, we haven't taken the decision, but um, I, I think, you know, 
uh, one can't predict every phase of the development of an escalating conflict because it, it does develop its own momentum. Again, you are, you're being very gentle and very subtle in your warning, but I want to see if I can pin you down a little more. I think everyone who finds himself in the middle of a conflict recognizes that he may become its accidental victim. But there is an enormous difference between becoming the accidental victim of violence and being the targeted victim of violence. Are you telling me that I, I, that, I, I, that is being well, debated I, within your councils right now? Yes, well, I don't, I don't know what the difference is because um, whether you are, you are a, a target by design or accident, uh, you, you still are a target. And um, uh, if, uh, if, if, you, if, if you associate yourself too closely uh, with, with, with the enemy, uh, don't blame anybody if people conclude that you are part of the enemy. Well, I do see a difference between being a, a target of design and a target of accident. And, and before I see banner headlines that say uh, that ANC targets, uh, you know, foreign businesses, I want to make sure that I give you every opportunity to also make that distinction clear. I think, I think there is a distinction. <laughs> no, uh, we, we, have, we have called on companies to divest. Um, the situation is becoming increasingly explosive. Um, they, they don't have to be told uh, by us what to do. They ought to, to, to weigh up the, the risk. Uh, and I can't take it further. I really can't take it further uh, than, than to say that they may find themselves in the wrong place at the wrong time. When we return, we'll hear Oliver Tambo's response to a charge that's been made time and again by the South African government that his organization is an arm of international communism. One of the charges made by the South African government against the African National Congress is that it is communist controlled. When we asked Oliver Tambo about his ties with the communists, he gave us this response. During the last World War, Britain, the United States, France were fighting Nazi Germany. So was the Soviet Union, a socialist state. They fought this common enemy together until they defeated it. What was the matter with that? Well, that depends... In, 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 in South Africa, we have the apartheid system. It is related to, 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 to the Nazi system. Same origins, same behavior, same character, denounced worldwide. Every South African, the churches are fighting this system. Communists, anti-communists, uh, women, workers, everybody. What is the matter with that? Dr. Tambo, let's... What is the problem, what is the problem about the ANC, an organization, finding itself, fighting a system which other South Africans who happen to be members of the Communist Party are also fighting? What is the matter with that? Let me pick up your analogy, Dr. Tambo, and see if I can explain why some people think there is something a matter with it. Uh, it all depends, again, following your World War II analogy, whether you happen to be sitting in East Germany or West Germany after the war. It all depends on whether you're sitting in France or whether you're sitting in Poland. I think what people fear is that in this coalition, alliance, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, the, the communists want to get something out of it, and I think the question is raised, who at the end may emerge triumphant? Who at the end may have the power? Will it be the ANC, or will it be the South African Communist Party? Now, um, but what, what can South Africa or anybody do about the fact that uh, South Africans decide to form a communist party with its objectives? What can anybody do about that? The ANC has its program. The Communist Party supports that program. 
What is going to happen at the end, when apartheid is gone, is that the people of South Africa, millions of them, will be in a democratic country. They will form organizations uh, according to their ideological convictions. And they will participate in, in the political debate at the time, exercising their rights, uh, democratic rights. What is the matter with that? There is a, a Communist Party in the United States. What's wrong with a Communist Party in South Africa? If South Africans want to be members of the Communist Party, who can stop that? When we come back, Oliver Tambo tells us the time has come for the United States to take mandatory and comprehensive action against apartheid. What prospects, if any, are there for ending the violence in South Africa? What role is the U.S. government expected to play? Those are the issues that conclude our interview tonight. We seem to be at what Lyndon Johnson used to call that, that tender spot between a rock and a hard place. I don't see even the faintest glimmer of hope in anything I've heard from you this evening, uh, Dr. Tambo. Do you see any hope? I do. I do. I think if it should dawn upon P.W. Border someday that he should release Nelson Mandela and other political prisoners. And all that he needs to do is to open the gates. Then there is hope there. But as you said before, only hope that you will then consider the negotiating process. In other words, even that. Naturally, we have got to start somewhere, shouldn't we? Well, I mean, why don't we start by saying if Nelson Mandela and all the political prisoners are released, there will be negotiations. Negotiations have also been known to break down, but what's wrong with starting? Well, we, we, yeah, we, we don't have to speculate. The, the, the problem is, we may be talking about something that's never going to take place. But if they came out... This is a movement. It's a new situation that is created. They are back after 24 years. They are leaders. They are national leaders of, of no small consequence. What is the matter with bringing them out? Dr. How difficult is that? We've been talking a long while, I, and I, I know it's late at night. Um, just tell me, as a means of summing up, what it is, A, that you want from the United States, and B, what do you expect from the United States? What we want from the United States is a decision to impose at last comprehensive, mandatory, total, sanctions against the apartheid system. That is what we want. I don't know what to expect, but I would expect that the American people, members of Congress, their constituencies, the working people in the United States, will want to ensure that this happens and happens soon. I expect that to happen. I may be very badly disappointed. But I expect them to do it because they have the capacity. They have demonstrated this capacity in the past. We are appealing to them again now to do more than they have done in the past. Even though in the short term at least it may damage U.S. interests. It would not damage U.S. interest to destroy a criminal a system. What interest does the U.S. have in the maintenance of the apartheid system? Well, if it is a crime against humanity. I can't see that the U.S. has any interest in the maintenance of a crime against humanity, a racist crime against humanity. That must be very foreign to the philosophy of the United States people. What interest do they have in the maintenance of a system that is tantamount to slavery? 
in the late 20th century. Dr. Tambo, it's been a pleasure to speak to you again. As always, I thank you very much for joining us this evening. Thank you very much. For a full report on overnight news developments, tune in tomorrow to World News This Morning and Good Morning America. And tomorrow on World News Tonight with Peter Jennings, you'll find out who ABC News has chosen as its Person of the Week. That's our report for tonight. I'm Ted Koppel in Washington. For all of us here at ABC News, good night. This has been...